News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News 46 is also brought to you by Nevada Health Link. Open enrollment ends February 15th. Visit www.nevadahealthlink.com today. Tonight on News 46, three men discuss the tragic events at an accident. CASA holds their annual Mardi Gras, and kids participate in a spelling bee at Pahrump Valley High School. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Wednesday, February 11th, 2015. I'm Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. President Barack Obama today made the case for Congress to formally authorize the use of military force in the war against ISIS. He said the bill reflects our core objective to destroy ISIL and includes authority for a systematic and sustained campaign of airstrikes, support and training for forces on the ground and humanitarian assistance. Jerry Tarkanian, the legendary men's basketball coach who won the 1990 national championship at the University of Nevada and won was known to battle with the NCAA, died today in Las Vegas. He was 84 years old. Tarkanian had been hospitalized since Monday with respiratory problems and had been hospitalized three times in the last 10 months for various ailments, including two heart attacks. Coach Tarkanian's contribution to UNLV in Southern Nevada stretches far beyond the game of basketball. Many in Southern Nevada and around the nation were introduced to UNLV through Coach Tarkanian and the Running Rebels. Tarkanian, known as Tark the Shark, retired in 2002 after 38 seasons of coaching, including 31 in Division I. He coached UNLV from 1973 to 1992, taking the Running Rebels to four Final Fours and won the national championship in 1990. At UNLV, he won 11 regular season conference championships, seven tournament championships, and made 12 NCAA tournament appearances, including a stretch of nine consecutive years. After briefly coaching the NBA San Antonio Spurs in 1992, Tarkanian coached at Fresno State, his alma mater, from 1995 until his retirement in 2002. He will be missed. News 46 caught up with three men who recently rescued a female who was in a rollover accident. The local heroes did all they could to help the woman while waiting for emergency crews who then airlifted her to UMC Trauma in Las Vegas. The 26-year-old female prompt resident is still in critical condition in the hospital. Chris, Darrell, and Paul wanted to correct a story about the accident that was what they called reported incorrectly in a local paper. To me, my son's a hero. <laughs> He saved that little gal's life. My, from, when she went by us, she was doing, had to be doing excess of 100 miles an hour because she left us like she was standing still. We saw the dust and uh, the car flipping in the air. We pulled up to it. My son was out of the car before any of us down there to us. He noticed that her legs were trapped under the car. So uh, Paul Ings, uh, Chris, and myself, we flipped the car over. At that time, he saw that her seatbelt was choking her neck, so he reached in and undid her seatbelt. Uh, he had to turn around to the people from the road crew and tell them to get away from the car. They had lit cigarettes. He didn't know if gas was leaking or anything else. The uh, Prompt Valley Times states that uh, they were the first on the scene. They were not. They saw it, the accident happen from the top of the hill. Uh, they did nothing in the way of aiding. My son is a hero. It took the emergency crews between half an hour and 45 minutes to get to the scene. I'd like to know why, when there is a fire station up at the top of Spring Mountain that could have responded within 10 minutes, had it been staffed with EMTs or emergency care, is our state so poor that we can't provide that type of aid? There is no reason it took that long. It was not until uh, Scott Lewis and the Highway Patrol arrived at the scene, and all of Prump, the only one from Las Vegas that was there, was the fire engine from Spring Mountain. 
why couldn't someone have been there sooner? The car it was on its side and it was on top of her two legs and it was pushing her, her legs were pushing her out the window and the seatbelt was across her neck keeping her from breathing. And that's what I told dad and we just and Paul and we just pushed the car over off of her and as the car went to tip I held her from bouncing around in the car and then I undid the seatbelt and I didn't move her at all. Her legs were already up in the air. She was barely breathing but she did move her neck on her own to where she could breathe and I cleared her airways so she wouldn't gag on any, any saliva or anything and I just kept talking to her, asking her questions, patting her on her shoulder, talking to her, trying to let her know that somebody was there. You know, I, I know that you guys are all concerned about her and what a traumatic uh, experience but thank you so much for being there. I know that her mother and uh, her family thank you so much for being there. What a great thing that you guys did. Well, it's just something that anyone in our position should have done. And I, I just hope that if the same thing happened to someone else, people will do it for them. But wear your seatbelts. Don't drink. The seatbelt actually Don't did drink save and her drive, life. That's for sure. I will say that the seatbelt did save her life. Uh, if she wouldn't have been wearing that seatbelt, it would have thrown her out of that vehicle. And uh, what a great group of guys there. When we return from this break, we'll have your Desert View Hospital health tip, which addresses breast cancer. This portion of the news is brought to you by. Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. Welcome back to News 46. After receiving a diagnosis of breast cancer, even at an early stage, why do some women have better outcomes than others? Does racial and ethnic background play a role? A new study examined rates of breast cancer, diagnosis, and survival among women from different racial and ethnic backgrounds. This health tip is brought to you by Desert View Hospital and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment, 775-751-7100. Thousands of women are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. They come from varying racial and ethnic backgrounds. Although Sharon Newman's breast cancer was diagnosed very early, the news still came as a surprise. I went into um, denial mode. <laughs> I couldn't talk to anyone about it. Sharon's tumor was small and she was successfully treated. For other women, that's not always the case. Even among women with small breast cancers, there was a big difference in uh, the survival. Dr. Stephen Nayrod from Women's College Hospital in Toronto and co-authors reviewed the records of more than 450,000 women diagnosed with breast cancer of various stages and sizes during 2004 to 2011 in the United States. The researchers followed what happened to these women for up to seven years after their initial diagnosis. Compared to a white woman, a black woman was one and a half times to two times more likely to die of a small breast cancer, and a Chinese woman or Japanese woman were about half as likely to die of a small breast cancer. Hispanic women had a very similar uh, survival pattern to white women that were not Hispanic. Cancers are not more common in young black women, but those that do get breast cancer are more likely to have an aggressive course than a white woman, and much more likely than a Chinese or a Japanese woman. Dr. Nayrod says while screening, access to care, and awareness remain essential, an equally important concern is how the biology of breast cancer varies by race and ethnicity. It's important that we try to optimize our best treatments for all women with breast cancer, and if taking into consideration the women's ethnic background is helpful, we should be prepared to utilize that information. Sharon is doing well, but says breast cancer changed how she lives her life. I live every moment. I'm thankful for everything I have. I am, thank God, healthy. Catherine Dahl, The JAMA Report. Thanks so much, Catherine. Study authors say that 90% of women who were followed and diagnosed with stage one breast cancer survived seven years without reoccurrence. Thomas Matt Harris was arrested for possession of a firearm by a prohibited person, discharge of a firearm or other malicious destruction of private property and home invasion. Deputies responded to a report of possible burglary in progress on Turner Road on the south end of town. Harris reportedly left the scene in a pickup truck. Deputies located the vehicle and conducted a traffic stop. Harris said, according to police, that he was trying to help people from dying and was looking for a person named Billy to try to get his keys back and stop him 
from killing phantom people. Harris allegedly admitted to the break-in and that he ran over a fence on the property. He offered to pay for the damage, according to police. And Harris also, according to police, admitted using drugs to officers after further questioning. Harris was booked and transported to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. Assemblyman James Oscarson discusses new bills in the legislature. I've had some great opportunities. I've been up for about three weeks now, uh, having some pre-hearings for uh, ways and means and some budget hearings and things. I've gotten very involved with the, with the process, and I'm, I'm very excited about some of the committees I sit on. I do sit on Ways and Means. I chair the Health and Human Services Committee, and I also sit on the uh, uh, Natural Resources Committee, Natural Resources and Mining. So those are all great committees for our constituents to be able to represent them in Carson City. Is there some things that uh, locals should be looking for that are um, some bills that might be coming up that they might be interested in? Well, I, I think that uh, the water issues are always uh, critical here. Senator Goykichia and myself are watching them very closely. They will be heard in Senator Goykichia's committee. So if you have concerns or issues, please make sure you contact him or myself. We'll pass those remarks on to him. Uh, he, I, I know we're both very, um, very aware of, of the, um, the information that's in those two water bills, and we're... Uh, it will be it will be looked at, sliced and diced, and uh, looked at in a way that will benefit our constituents. Yeah, because in both of those bills, there's some kind of a good things, and there's some things that uh, you really, um, you guys, especially uh, Senator Pete Gorgachi and yourself, weren't so interested in um, letting uh, go forward. So, are you able to manipulate it like that and kind of negotiate with? Uh, with the state water engineer? Being in, in, and I've sat in several meetings with Senator Goykachia and others, and uh, we've had input, lots of input from residents here and our constituents here. We're well aware that there's lots of, uh, lots of flaws in those bills and certainly looking at them to make sure that if they come out, that they'll come out in a manner that's consistent with what our constituents' needs are. Because there is a lot of people that are kind of looking at that, aren't they? Absolutely. There's a lot. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of input from constituents, and that's what we need. Uh, both those bills are... Uh, again are being heard in uh, Senator Goykichia's committee and I'm confident that he's uh, he's well aware being uh, in the business that he's in and ranching and knowing the the water conditions in, in the area that he represents will look at them very carefully and not let things go through that that are going to be onerous to the to the constituents here in this community. After this break we'll have your Angie's list. If your windows are old, drafty, and a pain to open and close, you may want to consider a replacement project this year. Vinyl windows remain the most popular choice, and not just because they're the most affordable option. And today's Angie's List Report, a closer look at the benefits. Today's vinyl windows have come a long way. When vinyl windows first came out, they were generally an all-white product, and that was the only thing available. Now they have many different exterior colors as well as interior finishes, uh, including wood grains of various hues and uh, solid colors on the inside as well to match interior trims of most modern homes. In addition to being an energy saver, vinyl is also an attractive option for people who live in noisy neighborhoods. Vinyl windows actually are the highest rated from an insulation standpoint of today's windows. Many of them are available in triple pane versions, which is the ultimate in energy efficiency. Another big plus, very little upkeep. If you have older windows in your home, replacing with vinyl windows can be a really low maintenance option for you and they're easy to clean. Noise reduction is one of the first things that customers notice when new vinyl windows are installed. And for the ultimate noise reduction, the triple pane glass with three panes to protect against uh, noise transfer is the best way to go. While vinyl windows are cost effective, window replacement is an expensive project, easily costing more than $10,000. But Angie's List says it offers one of the highest returns on investment, at least 70%. You can have a strong return on investment for your window replacement, depending on the type of windows you're replacing with vinyl, because you're not only going to get energy efficiency, but also some appreciation in the value of your home. Whether you go with vinyl or another option, Edges List says you should always get three bids and make sure your window installer has experience with the type of material you want. I'm Noah Began for News 46. Thank you, Noah. CASA held their annual Mardi Gras Friday night at Mountain Falls. We have about 150 people here having a ball. Yeah. Uh, we have a great silent auction going on over there, lots of bids. Uh, we're going to have a live auction pretty soon, and the food is hot. That's why my mouth is burning. It's Cajun. <laughs> it's 
So uh, who do you have on stage? Uh, Lynn Peterson and the Fat Cats. And they play at a lot of our events, and they're a great band, and they're very uh, accommodating and, you know, take requests, and That's so wonderful. they're good. Ski Sensky's here from Nye County Auction. Ski is here from Nye County Auction. We're going to have about five or six live auction items, and uh, that always gets the crowd going. You know, they all have their bid battles ready to put their hand up. <laughs> People look like they're having a lot of fun. They have some masks and costumes on. Masks and coins on the table and Mardi Gras centerpieces and hats and beads of course lots of beads and we even had a living statue here oh, earlier yeah. she was standing on the <laughs> on a podium and but she's eating now oh, there you are. <laughs> oh I think I got a picture of her and she's uh, really decked out yes in gold yes, we yes. spray painted her gold from head to toe she looks amazing. so this Mardi Gras a big fundraiser for Casa what's coming up next for you guys well, our Crab Fest is coming up on March 14th. I've got five weeks uh -huh. till Crab Fest, uh -huh. and we're going to be selling tickets for that. And uh, we always have a good turnout. In fact, last year we sold out. We had some people come to the door that we had to turn away. So I'm hope hoping this year that we get everything sold well in advance. It is pretty much all you can eat because we do have an abundance of food. We always, you know, I'm always afraid to say that because you never know if somebody's going to really fill their plate and there's not going to be all you can eat. Yeah, yeah. But all maybe one person can eat. But um, no, we, we have plenty of crab. People go home very satisfied from that event. And then some people who don't like crab, you also accommodate them? We have chicken as well. Yeah, for those people. So that event, how can people buy tickets for that? They can call us at our office, 775-513-9514. How can people donate to CASA or volunteer or get involved with CASA any day of the year? They can call that same number. Uh, we have a training class for CASAs coming up in the spring, and uh, we always need CASAs. You know, in, in Pahrump alone, we have probably 80 children in foster care, and they all need to have a voice in court to speak up for them. So uh, we need CASAs all the time. We ask for a two-year commitment from each CASA, and the training is 36 hours, and uh, they're well-trained to take on a case. Oh my gosh, there were so many cute people in that picture. Uh, there was a spelling bee held yesterday at Pahrump Valley High School. Our own Herb Melvoin reports. The kids uh, were well prepared. The auditorium at Pahrump Valley High School was packed. And a uh, great event uh, took place for our kindergarten through second grade students with a break in between. And then our third through fifth grade students followed after that. It was a wonderful event. We want to thank Pahrump Valley High School, of course, for hosting that event. And uh, as well as all the staff and students that put time and energy and effort into the event. You had a wonderful uh, turnout from the community. I saw lots of parents' involvement there. Did it make you feel really good? Oh, absolutely. And, and as we talked about informally, uh, the parents, uh, children that I had as, as students, their children were participating, and the, their grandparents were there. So we had kind of three generations there of, of students that I've had personally uh, throughout the community as well as others, and uh, great support. I mean, that's just great support uh, for, those, for those kids and, and the parents too. So it was wonderful. There. There. T-H-E-R-E. -E. There. Spaceship. Spaceship. S-P-A-C-E-S-H-I-P. -E Spaceship. That is correct. The, uh, the runner-ups and the champions uh, received a trophy, and uh, all the students received a spelling bee cupcake, which were uh, very, very well done, and, and yes, they enjoyed those, and actually there were a couple leftovers that were uh, brought here to the district office that I saw floating around in hands of staff, which was, was wonderful, too. I personally would like to thank the staff here at the district level that, that, that put the event together for the district, and, and that was a coordinator, Debbie Carl, and her assistant was Desiree Velos, and they worked really hard at putting that together. And then our community people that helped judge and, and uh, uh, make that flow happen, Board President Tracy Ward was a caller yesterday, uh, community board member Don Rust participated as a judge. Michelle Bolton from J.G. Johnson was a, uh, a judge also, as, lo as well as Desiree Velos was a judge. And, and it, those kinds of people putting things together for the community and for the kids is just wonderful. And, and as we talked about a little bit yesterday, too, that's one of those events that we can't measure by te testing standards. It's one of those events that, um, unfortunately, are kind of getting squeezed out of public education because we're so geared towards, towards uh, the testing. And 
it was just great to see a community event come together that well. Zipper. Z-I-P-P-E-R, zipper. Buzz. Buzz. B-U-Z-Z, buzz. That is correct. Thanks so much, Herb, for that report. And I gotta tell you, it was so much fun watching Darby edit that video, and she was having a ball. Watching those little darlings at the high school showing their stuff. We're so proud of our local kids, and uh, what a great report. When we come back from this break, we'll have your weather with Noah Began. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. Hello and welcome back to News 46. Today is Wednesday, February 11th. Today we had sunny skies with a high of 69 degrees. Your average temperature around this time of year is 62 degrees. Winds were coming from the east-northeast today at 8 miles per hour with gusts up to 18 miles per hour. So we had some high winds outside today. The UV index today was 3, which is low. Humidity was at 15% today. Sunrise was at 637 this morning. And the record high in 1971 was 79 degrees. Well, tonight we'll have mostly clear skies with a low of 41 degrees. Your average temperature around this time of year is just one degree below that, above that at 42 degrees. Winds will be coming from the northeast this evening at 5 miles per hour with gusts up to 7 miles per hour. Humidity will be at 30% this evening. Sunset was at 521 this evening, and the record low in 1939 was 22 degrees. Well, tomorrow we'll have sunny skies with a high of 73 degrees and a low of 44 degrees. Winds will be coming from the east-southeast at 5 miles per hour with gusts up to 7 miles per hour. Humidity will be at 18 percent. Sunrise will be at 636 tomorrow morning, and the UV index will be 4, which is low. For our 7-day forecast, we have sunshine across the board. Your high temperatures will be starting off in the low 70s. That will be going up into the high 70s around this weekend and all the way down into the mid-60s around mid-next week. Then your low temperatures, you'll be looking at a similar pattern. It will be starting off in the mid-40s, going up into the high 40s around this weekend and all the way down into the high 30s mid-next week. Thanks, Noah. Hey, look who's joining me. Hello, Deanna. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, just mm -hmm. finished setting up the uh, commissioner meetings. We're going to start those back up next Tuesday. So I took uh, um, one of our interns down there and uh, Herb and yeah, showed Herb. them how to do it all. So it's all set up. We're going to yeah. start uh, putting uh, those back on and hopefully we'll have uh, uh, some great success on 46.3 in those commissioner meetings. You're not supposed to be working. I know. <laughs> I, am, I am absolutely beat. He's sitting I mean, here. I was on the roof down there, and I'm, I'm exhausted. Oh, my gosh. He actually said that. He's uh, on the roof. You were on the roof. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Again, we had to tune the microwave, and that took a little bit. But everything is fine. I mean, so how's it going? Give, me, give, me, give everybody uh, an update. They want to know well, how your health is. You know, I mean, I'm very tired. I have uh, a lot of uh, uh, anxiety. It's, I'm sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> but uh, the recovery is good. I feel strong. <laughs> I feel fantastic. Yeah. Um, Sometimes uh, shorter breath, but uh, you know, I mean, I'm, it's what's expected. My mind runs faster than my body does right now, and I'm definitely not the same person I was. Yeah. Well, you're gonna you're gonna get back there, right? Yeah, I do. I start cardio rehab uh, next week, so I'm excited about that, and you know, I can't wait to uh, you know get the heart pumping more. I'm running about. Last they said it was 45% when I left the hospital. I'm at 75% now. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing. <laughs> We're getting the all wrap it up thing. Okay. And I wanted to bring you up here and, um, and uh, sh have everybody see you. He is alive. He's doing well. And he survived it all. Yeah, in survive. case you guys don't know, Vern had, I don't know how many heart attacks. Like three. Three? Three. three? Two, Maybe four? Two, yeah, no, just three. I had a, a, a first one, which was the warning. It all could have been prevented. I actually, it's a long story, but it should have never gone where it did, but. Uh, I'm here, and uh, well, we're glad to have you back. Thank you. We couldn't make it without you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. That's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Vern Van Winkle. Good night. Good night.